Hey everybody, it's Friday, March 11th. How is the how are you guys all doing today? I um had a lot of fun talking about my Bernina on Wednesday. And if any of you missed it and want to see it, certainly you can go back. A couple questions came in that I just want to address. Um, one was they're looking at the 800 series and what's the difference between the 700 series and the 800 series. And honestly, I'm so centric to the 700 series that I just said, get yourself a good dealer and um, they will explain the difference. And in fact, I know exactly who she went to and she couldn't have been in better hands. And she ended up with a top of the line 800. Uh, they're all just have different, you know, little functions and things and stuff like that. I am sending out a ton of these. Remember, if I get this to you before you go purchase it, you get a hundred bucks off from Bernina USA. So there's a lot of shopping going on. And to tell you the truth, I'm a bit envious. Like I need another sewing machine. <laughs> okay, so here's a couple. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bonnie, we have a lot. Okay, let me say it. We have a lot we're going to do today. We have an interview with Ty Flanagan from the um, Modern Guild Quilt Show and also Priscilla Bancroft. And they're very different, but very interesting. And I'm excited to bring both. Also, I want to show you what I'm working on now. I've started. I don't even know how to do it. And also, I got a surprisey in the mail, and I'm going to do an unboxing. So we got a lot to do today. Okay, Linda, how long did it take you to get your check um, uh, from Bernina? Barbara Black said it took like about seven weeks. So just patience is a virtue, okay? So Bonnie sent me this, and she got, this is a Bernina ball protector, <laughs> which is on your 700, maybe your 500 series too. And those are very, very sensitive pieces of equipment. I gotta be careful while I say it. And so she got this from, um, grab a pencil and, or maybe somebody can uh, enter it at a quilting in the valley in LaSalle. And I looked up Quilting in the Valley, the store in LaSalle, and it looks as if they have maybe four different stores. And it's something that is crafted, the store has crafted and sells. So this is not a Bernina accessory, but, and I think it was about 12 bucks or something like that. So Bonnie, thank you for sending that along. I, I just love you guys. You take care of us. We, and speaking of that, Debbie then sent me this picture. My machine comes with a, um, a stylist, okay? And it is supposed to hang on the side of the machine on the right-hand side, that, like on the edge there. And it just keeps falling off or it's hard to reach because my uh, machine is, is, is down. You know, it's, it's set down. So brilliant. Get yourself some of those tabs, put it on. You can put it right there. You're supposed to use the stylist when you're changing functions. I don't, but you're supposed to use that. Also, look, she's got that command strip hook up there for her scissors too, her Karen K. Buckley scissors. And I do have a command strip on mine to be able to, um, um, Okay, okay, to be able to hang my scissors on. Okay, Christina just said, hello from the Santa Cruz Mountains of Northern California. My postcard arrived and just saw that Bernina is offering a 0% interest for 60 months until March 15th. Okay, I, I'm just saying what Christina's saying here. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't think her pants are on fire. It might be worth calling and asking. Okay, and then Linda says the Redland Sewing Center in Redlands, California also has those things. I got to get myself one because I'm too hinked up about traveling it with it and bumping it and stuff like that. Okay, so we got a couple inner, um, oh no, so the show that starts this Sunday, this Sunday's a big day, is with Tommy Romano and if you know of any beginning quilters this is the show for them to watch. What you can have them do is we have a one week free. We do take your credit card. You have to cancel at the end of the week, but you, we have a one week free 
for new members that they can get in there and watch. I love Tommy Romano. You can tell there. He is a school teacher and is at a Jesuit school and in Texas, and he goes through his three basic classes that he teaches at the local quilt shop. He is very, very traditional in his work, and um, he did something crazy with Sudoku, a Sudoku quilt. But anyways, I thought that, thought that his show was amazing for beginners. Let's just take a quick look at the trailer, okay? Tommy Romano is back and he's doing what he does best, teaching easy quilts that pack a punch. You'll fall in love with his jelly bean quilt using jelly rolls. Or see how to play Sudoku with your quilt design and end up with amazing results. It's a Japanese puzzle, you know, it has its origins there. And this to me seemed like it would be more something that would fit with that kind of culture, that kind of style, that kind of feel, rather than something that would be more a traditional quilt pattern. Plus, while we're deep in the heart of Texas, we had to take you to the Texas Quilt Museum. You're going to love this adventure. The Texas Quilt Museum owes Carrie Bresenhan and Nancy O'Brien Puentes all of the respect and credit we could possibly give because without their vision and their acquisition of the buildings and then the planning of a wonderful garden, none of that would be here. From the Lone Star State, with love, we're bringing you the best. On the next Quilt Show, join us. And if Carrie and Nancy ring a bell to you, they're the ones that are Quilts Inc. that put on the Houston show and markets and all that. So again, if you know a beginner, this is the show for them. And the very first quilt, the one that came from the Jelly Rolls, was super uber easy. So also, if you have, you got to whip something together, yes, it's very, very good. Okay, I also want to go to the Texas Quilt Museum, badly. So let's take a look at, um, let's, wait, I want to show you one thing that I, sh I did a guild last night. It was in um, Michigan and, or yeah, it was the Great Lakes Heritage Quilt Guild. And I started taking um, photographs of newer stuff that I've been doing. And I want to show you uh, um, the quilt that I showed them. Okay, that's Cindy Needham's. I don't know. I mean, I did it. I did it in her class, and I'm all about taking classes and all that good stuff. And then here is a close-up. I did this on my Q20, and it was this quilt that when I really fell in love with my Q20, I was so afraid I couldn't get the minutia that I get on my 765, but we cer I certainly can. And then what I want to show you here is what I am working on right now. Um, I just started it yesterday. It's a combination of the handwork that we've been doing and also Cindy Needham. So this is a piece that I got uh, out of my box and I absolutely love it. Those are buttons that are, Joanne Sharp made fun of me saying buttons. Um, these are buttons. Oh, I know the other word, Joanne, it's cotton. <laughs> Speak like, speak, speak in English. <laughs> Anyways, I started laying this out because I found a thing on the internet about button embroidery. I can't wait to show you. Okay, then this, just for grins, the um, horizontal piece that goes across the bottom, that is bobbin lace that I did in college. And when we redid this room, um, they were in little plastic frames. We took them out. And I, you're looking at, you know, 20 hours of work there, of that bobbin lace. Um, and I, I thought at some point I am going to integrate it into my work. That vertical brown piece is also a um, bobbin lace that I did in, in college. And those buttons are from my mom's button box. Um, I can't wait to dig in and do whatever the heck you can do with embroidery and buttons. So, and I'm going to say that the, the Texas Museum is on my bucket list. I've not yet been able to go. But in the meantime, let's, let's go to QuiltCon and see what we have going on. 
First of all, we're going to go to Priscilla Bancroft, and she is a Navajo quilter. Um, they had an exhibit of quilts from indigenous people, and uh, she talks about her quilt in the show. And what struck me about it is how connected she is with the earth. Well, I'm going to quit talking about it. Let's just go take a look, okay? Hi, we are yeah. here at the Indigenous Quilt Makers Exhibition. We just talked a little bit ago with Susan Hudson, and this is one of the other makers of the quilts in this beautiful exhibition, uh, Priscilla Bancroft. So tell us a little bit about this quilt that we have in front of us. Okay, um, this quilt represents uh, a mountain, which uh, in where I'm coming from is a, uh, what they consider a sacred mountain. So I tried to depict the mountain here. Um, the bear is representative of power. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but the mountain in our way provides a lot of things for us. Not only its sacredness, but also it provides uh, medicine, herbs, it provides wildlife that feed the people. And so um, I think if you go around the country or the world, a lot of indigenous tribes will find, you'll find that they have their own sacred mountains. So this is just one that, that I uh, depicted here on my quilt because this is uh, special to me. This area here represents the, what we consider the toe of the mountain, and over there is the elbow. So if it was a full length, um, it would have the, uh, it would be representative of uh, a person laying down. So it's generally the name of the mountain is the sleeping mountain. So is this the elbow? That's the elbow. This is the elbow uh -huh. here, and this is the toe. The toe. <laughs> As if it's a person. Yes. Oh. And then, of course, I put the bat, uh, bear in, and I called it a shadow bear because the bear is within the mountain. It's in the mountain, and it's, it's, to me, it's like bear, but sometimes you don't always see it, so that's in the shadow bear. And uh, the other thing that I added in here was I added this half star, and um, I added the half star because I wanted to show, um, you know, a rising star on the mountain to show that it's another uh, beautiful day that the Creator has given to us. So it's depicted here to show another another day that we're able to walk on the earth with the Creator. Um, and then you've also got the bear So what I did was I uh, decided to put my bear paws up there. And uh, so that's, and I put it on there representing the four directions. The other thing is that these are all in fours, as you can see. They're also represented in four directions. So what are, the, what are the four directions? Well, the four directions is the north, south, and east okay. that we pray to. Um, if you look closer in here, in these, in the yellow blocks, if you really look at it, it it's a material that has the um, national parks. So if you look at it, you can see... Oh, it's got a map. A so map. It's a map of the yes. national parks. Yes. Oh. And then I use the, you know, the, the fading, I forget what it's called, ombre. In here. It is a lovely, it's a lovely quilt. And you said this is one of the first pieces that you've done in this, this sort of style. In this style, yes. Because you usually work in the star. Yes. Yes. So are you going to continue in maybe this? I do have another, um, I do have another vision of another bear quilt, but that bear will be standing up. Well, thank you so much for sharing your lovely quilts with all of us and telling us the story about this particular one. So, uh, we really, really thank you very much. It's a lovely one. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Well, Stella, I was just reading the comments. You can be very proud of your mom. <laughs>
is just wonderful. And I can't wait to see what the next quilt is. I knew very little about this culture. So uh, I did go and Google indigenous quilters and there seems to be a lot of the broken stars in the whole thing. So I look forward to Monday's interview with Susan Hudson, who happens to be here too. It's it's longer and I believe it goes into more detail. So I am thrilled that they had this special exhibit at QuiltCon. And again, I appreciate when we can celebrate everybody's culture all over the world because boy, we all bring a lot to the table that's different now, don't we? Okay, so the next, oh, thank you. Yes, she is amazing. Stella, how old are you? <laughs> I want to know how old you are. <laughs> She's lucky to have you. And now the big question is, Stella, are you a quilter? <laughs> all right, come here. Well, my daughter isn't, really. <laughs> she has a sewing machine, but that's about it. Okay, so... Moving on, completely different. Well, that's why I love this sport so much. I'm 42. You're like my daughter then. Huh. Okay. Um, Ty Flanagan is fairly new to the quilting scene, and he is... Um, intrigued by the Islamic culture. And so a lot of that comes into his pieces. So we're going all over the place. Let's go, let's go meet up with Ty. And by the way, Ty, if I can be a creepy old lady, you're darn cute. <laughs> creepy old lady. <laughs> okay, here we go. That is so wrong. I just did that. I am so sorry. <laughs> On 10,000 levels. That is so wrong. Forgive me, Ty. <laughs> Hi, we're back at QuiltCon, and guess who we've run into? Hi, I'm Ty Flanagan. And so tell us about Ty, because you're fairly new on the scene. I mean, if you've been on an Instagram for a while, I've seen, but maybe for some of us out there in who've been stuck at home, we don't know who you are, so tell us what you do. I made my first quilt back in 2016-17, so I still feel like a newbie in yeah. terms of quilting. Um, but I really like patchwork. I love the precision of it. I, I love paper piecing and regular traditional piecing or precision piecing. And you like complex I designs. Do. You I really, do. That's what I noticed. They're not just simple squares sewn together. They are simple, super complicated. Yeah, after my first quilt, I just kind of realized like anything that's with a grid could be a quilt. And then I went down this whole rabbit hole. Um, I have a background in Arab studies geometry as my starting point. Um, I like to do a deep dive in the geometry, and then I zoom out and say, how would I turn this into fabric and seams? So it's kind of slicing and dicing those shapes and then putting them back together. So what are, what are you doing here? You're teaching, you said. Yes, yes. Um, I just taught my first class this morning. I have a few more classes. I'm teaching Ottoman rings, which is one of my patterns, um, which has gentle curves and partial seams, which is a fun patchwork challenge. Um, and I'm also teaching a precision, precision piecing class using my fig leaf pattern. Um, and both of those quilts are in the show here today. Fabulous. And then you're, and then you're also lecturing. I mean, yes. you're, you're doing a whole gamut <laughs> of things here. Yeah, I figure each quilt comes a time to try new things, maybe get outside your comfort zone. Yes. So um, I have taught a little bit locally, but this is my first time teaching at QuiltCon. And um, I'm really passionate about some topics, so I thought it'd be fun to share it with the community. So I'm talking about complex designs, uh, cons how you might consider constructing those with patchwork or applique. And then I'm also talking about Islamic geometry, but from a quilter's perspective. Um, how might one want start exploring that space if they're new to it, um, right. get some terms, and just get, get the wheels turning there. Yes, yes, and you said you didn't have anybody crying or walking out of the <laughs> class, so that was a good thing. Yeah, I think we had a good, <laughs> we had some satisfied students, so that was... Oh, a, and that's great yeah. as a teacher. Yes. Yeah. So the other thing we noticed, we couldn't help. <laughs> uh, besides patchwork for the bed or the wall, you all also make garments. Yeah. Um, so tell I us about those pants. I started with patchwork, but then I went, jumped into garment sewing. It kind of scratches the same itch that patchwork does in terms of precision and um, like that tailoring aspect. Yeah. Um, and pants do take precision to, yeah. to make, to fit well. Yeah. Um, my first pair of pants was a disaster, but these are probably number seven or eight. Okay. So. There is a learning curve. So you've got the pattern down <laughs> yeah. and all the measurements. Well, yeah. They're fabulous. These are nice, uh, like cotton canvas, nice weight for Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a bit, a bit of fun. A little flair is nice for a conference. Yes. And so 
Well, it's been great to meet you. And so you are still planning on teaching out on the circuit? Yeah, when I'm doing get out? I'm doing some virtual classes here this year with uh, a few guilds. Yeah. I do offer a few virtual lectures as well. Um, I'm based in Washington, D.C., so depending on what the landscape looks like in the future, um, there's potential for in-person. Okay. And yeah. so what is your website in case somebody's looking for you? Um, you can find me, it's my name, but it's spelled T-I-G-H-E, tyflanagan.com, or find me on Instagram at tyflanagan. Well, thank you so much. It's been great following you uh, virtually, and now that we're going to meet you in person and see, yeah. uh, see what you've been doing, so it's been great. Uh, so definitely check out Ty. And maybe you'll do a garment class or men's <laughs> slacks at some point down the road. There's anything's possible. Yes. All right. Well, well thank you so much. Good to bump into you. Yes. I, I'm, I, am I allowed to uh, pick a favorite child here? I think the two that I just, oh, are the rings, which I think the rings with the dark background, and then the blooms one, just, oh, yeah, beautiful. But anyways, he wants to go out and travel, and so get a hold of him, and, and there you go. So very, very exciting. All right, so I want to... I want to do a little unboxing. I got an e an email from uh, Paula, and she, okay, wait, hold, yeah, anything is possible, Ty says, Christina says, yep. Anyways, Paula wanted to know if I would be interested in some um, linens that she has, and they've been sitting on her shelf, and I mean, of course, I would be crazy not to say it, and it's so funny because as I put my little camera on my little footstool, I see this take time to be kind. And Paula, what you have done is so kind, I can't even hardly stand it. And I thought it might be fun to unbox from here. Now, I can't, I, here's the box, okay? I, I can't, I'm going to take things out of the box and put it up on here rather than put the box under here and get all cumbersome because I really want to take a look. And she put little stories with each one, which is wonderful. Um, this is her aunt's embroidery, and she says, have I ever seen such perfect stitches? I would tell you, people, that that almost looks like it's, hand, it's machine done, but it's not. And look at how they would do it. My guess is this is a pillowcase. Yes. Look at these. Um, uh, fabulous. If I had a pink bedroom, I can tell you right now they'd be on they'd be on the bed. Now the other thing I love with these pillowcases is that uh, many times in the olden days they'd be edged with lace. Oh, they're the same. Ooh, I don't know, man. I don't know those. Ooh. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting hot and bothered here. All right, people, hot and bothered. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this one. It's kind of, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, she says, I think these pieces were purchased by her mom in Ukraine from a street seller in Odessa. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Oh my goodness. And you know, I'm going to hold this one up. You know the person probably just got pennies. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I crocheted maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can. Okay, what's this? Do I have any notes in here? This is kind of exciting. Okay. Ah, oh, look at these. Oh, wait. <laughs> look at these. Oh my gosh, I might have to do, I, I can see a future with my mom's buttons. Oh, look at this. I don't think I'm quite clear. This is, this is better than Christmas. I hope you don't feel this is rude, people. But I thought it would be funner to, funner, fun to unbox this. Look at the, the lace on this. Wow. Here we go. Look at that. Mom is happy. <laughs> I could see this with beautiful quilting in the different areas. <laughs> okay, here's another pillowcase, and I'm wondering, the work is pretty special. You know, the other thing on here, you guys, is these are ideas of what you, you know, what I can do, you can do down the road with the embroidery. All right. This is so exciting. I guess these would be like little coaster things or something. Um... You know, one thing that you can't see is how stiff this stuff is. I mean, they are starch to kingdom come here. Oh, my God, that would have to be beautiful. Okay, what's this one? <gasps> hey, there's no taking back, okay? These are mine now. <laughs> no taking back. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, this is a, I wonder what this was. Huh, do any of you, what's this, you guys, with these little pocket things in here? I don't know, I don't know what that is. Do some of you know it's got a little snappy snap and it's round? I have no idea what this is, but, wow, see, look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, okay, then what's this? Another, another little one. Okay. Wow. I'm just going to bring this across the screen like this. And you know where it's discolored and stuff like that? That retro clean's going to take it right out. John's coming in. A bun warmer? My bum wouldn't fit in that. <laughs> shows how much we have, how many buns we have at our house. <laughs> Look at these, you guys. Just gorgeous. Thank you so much that you took time to be kind. I'm going to say that right now. Oh, these are beautiful. And now again, oh, oh, yay, 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 yay. Can you even imagine doing that? No. Oh, they're all the same. I've never seen anything like this before. Look at that. And I could underlay something on it. Oh. Okay. Well, that was Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, Merry Christmas to you guys, okay? Our International Quilt Weekend um, is next, not, not tomorrow, Saturday, a week from, but this is what you need to know. Starting Sunday, you're going to get an email letter that's separate from our Sunday regular thing, and um, that is where you will register to win the prizes. We have a lot of really great things going on the next weekend. Don't snooze because you will lose, okay? So make sure you are on our email, our email mail list. And also there'll be stuff on the site too. But this Sunday is when registration starts. Uh, we have many, many wonderful prizes. Most of them around uh, $500. 
with the exception of the Bernina, somebody's going to get a five, uh, 500 quilting edition. I don't know the number. I think it's a 570, but I'm not sure. Someone's going to get that. But also, uh, Quilters Select, the company I'm with, um, we are, you will get a complete set of rulers. And I want you to note that there is now, uh, I don't know when we're going to get it in the store, but that back center one is 36 inches long. Mm -hmm. So that's just under $500, I think, that prize. So a lot of really great prizes. So you're going to want to make sure that you enter. Okay, do you have to log in to Facebook to participate in the quilt weekend? Now, you'll be able to do stuff off our site. Primarily here, when we're doing things like this, it's on the website, which is Facebook. It's also on YouTube. Remember, uh, Friday, Saturday, I'm going to do a week from Saturday. I'm going to do a whole thing on quilting basics. Again, if you have somebody who's brand new, get them to that Tommy Romano show. And I think I might bring something to the plate a week from Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning, just like here. And then Sunday, Ricky's going to be doing tricks and tips that he loves. And here comes the man. Okay, so what John said is when we go live, we direct people to Facebook and YouTube because that's the only way you can chat, right? It's on the site. It's on the site, but you can't chat if you're on the site is what you're saying? Correct. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, learning something every day. Okay, um, can you use the quilting rulers with the older low shank Bernina presser foots? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And were there quilting rulers in there? Where are there? Do I see quilting rulers? You know what? I, 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 this whole shank thing is all new to me. Sorry to be so ignorant. So you're going to have to, um, look at it and check it out. Okay. Yes, there will be links on the website to get you from here to there. And I'm sorry, Raging Smirk. <laughs> I don't like that, um, that I can't answer that for you. Okay, I'm just going to hang here for a second to see if you have any other questions. Um, let's see. Roll keeper to keep rolls warm during dinner. Hmm, I'm trying to think, how could I use it for my sewing stuff? Okay, I think we're pretty good. I appreciate uh, having you here today, and I thank Priscilla and Ty for letting us interview you. I know it was not the best pristine um, conditions because they were on the floor. We were not able to secure room. But also thank you to Mary Kay and Lilo for going and getting these interviews. I, I almost, almost feel like I was there. Um, will you have to register for the live weekend? No, you'll just show up just like here. Mm -mm. But to win prizes, yes. So don't do that. <laughs> The linen with the snaps is for rolls. You know, my grandpa wouldn't eat any meal without bread. A bread without meal didn't, a, a meal without a bread didn't exist. Okay. All right, guys. I'll, I'll see you Monday. And again, we're going to be with Susan Hudson. Um, and she's going to talk more in depth about the whole indigenous project that, that, that is, that they had at Quilt Con and Plus. I mean, it's all new to me. And so I'm ever so grateful to learn about how other cultures approach quilting and what's important to them. Like with Priscilla today, that was flipping awesome. Okay. Um, I believe Linda is correct. I think those are pretty much quilting rulers are for cutting, not for machine quilting. We do have machine quilting rulers, but I look quickly there and I don't think they're in that package. No, Paul, you do not have to be present to win, but <laughs> sometimes people enter these contests and they give us a fake email address. And if you give us a fake email address, you're not going to win because that is how we are going to contact you. And we have contacted people in the past, and they haven't answered the email because they think it's spam. So if you get an email from us, uh, open it. I can't say that strong enough. Okay, I will see you guys Monday. And uh, Susan, I can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye.